Hey guys, uh, this is Al again. It's uh, Saturday the 30th of January and uh, back at the shop. Um, as you can see, we pulled the 560 SEC and it's uh, up on the lift. So it was quite interesting how we got the, uh, uh, the car onto the lift. So as you know, it was in the back of the building all the way on, you know, on the other side. Uh, we just had to pour a little bit of fuel into the intake, drive it back about four feet, pour a little bit more and just keep basically backing out until we got it into the building and then straight onto the lift that way. So didn't have to push it or anything else like that, but it was kind of lots of getting in and out, out of the car. It's kind of interesting. Um, so uh, we know what the problem is. Um, let me take the uh, camera off and I'll show you. All right. So here's a fuel pump assembly. Um, and what's going on is that uh, the, one of the fuel pumps, I believe it's this one over here, right, is bad. And the way we tested it is we just basically put power directly. We disconnected both pumps because they're running on the same circuit. One of them did run when you put power to either pump. So we had to disconnect this pump over here, and you can see where it's been disconnected. You can see that this, this connection's off. And uh, we saw that there was no power, which was what was causing... Um, what was causing uh, a problem with the with the system? You know why why it was leaking. Uh, we also found another issue that we definitely need to address, and that is that the hose, this hose over here, um, can you see this one? Uh, not. Let me see if I can show you. This one over here, the one behind, and it's basically this hose that comes into the second pump and then wraps around that steel line and goes uh, into this, into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, the back pump. So it comes out from the first pump, kind of loops around and into the second pump. That hose is, uh, is completely rotten and it's, um, it's a crimped hose. So it's a hydraulically crimped hose that goes into a steel line that feeds into this second pump over here at the banjo bolt. So, um, uh, we have to replace that now. Unfortunately, that part used to be available, but we have, a, you know, as I mentioned, I have a whole uh, bunch of parts and uh, from different cars that I've dismantled over the years. So I did have another assembly, and the uh, as that assembly was also bad. But we we took it off and we're taking it to a hydraulic shop. Uh, the kid took it over there this morning, so he when he comes in. Um, it should be basically rebuilt and we should be good to go. Um, that part used to be readily available. You used to be able to buy it for like 50 or $60. But, you know, I checked with Wellpack, uh, IMC, uh, nobody had it. So, uh, um, so I think it's a dealer-only item. And uh, we obviously rebuilt the one that we, we have. I'm going to keep the other one. I'm not going to throw it away. Probably get that one rebuilt. And if I can find a new one, I'll also buy a new one and stick it on the shelf just in case because that's kind of one of those things that, that will happen. And I have another SE, SEL, 560 SEL that will probably need it as well. We'll replace the fuel pump as well. I ordered a brand new fuel pump. I, I have a good working one. This one's actually in pretty good shape. It runs. But I figured, you know, I'm, I don't want to do this job again, so I just bought a brand new fuel pump from Worldpack. They were already like $130 plus tax. It wasn't a lot of money, so um, I ordered that. Um, what else is going on with this car? So there's other things that are that need addressing on this car. Um, it's got these beautiful Lorenzo allo alloy wheels. They're Lorenzo LOs. And I remember getting these wheels back in 2008. Um, I actually traded a set of 14-inch bunts for these wheels. Some guy had a 450SL uh, with these wheels on. They had brand new set of Kumo tires on them, and uh, and uh, he didn't like them. He felt like they were unoriginal, so he just wanted a set of 14-inch bunts. And I had uh, a, a spare set of a car that I uh, was dismantling, so I pulled them off, and we did a straight swap. And uh, now, you know, these, these wheels cost a, a, a small fortune, you know, so I think I lucked, lucked out there. Uh, the tires are still the same tires from 2007 because the car's been sitting for so long, and uh, three of them don't hold air anymore. Um, 
I think one of these has a, a crack somewhere in the tread and it's just leaking. So uh, I'm going to order another set of tires for it when I, uh, when I uh, get the car running and uh, start to drive it. I'm also uh, going to be working on um, uh, the suspension. The, uh, the front end is in, not in, in the greatest shape right now. Um, you've got really loose idler arm, loose guide rods. Um, so I have, I have almost a full, a full kit, ball joints, uh, lower control arm bushings. I need to order the upper control arms and the idler arm kit, and I think I, I'll be done. Um, again, unfortunately, none of the quality manufacturers are, are selling parts for these. I can't find uh, length order uh, tie rods. I can't find length order control arms. Uh, the only thing I can find is the cheesy uh, brands, the low quality brands which has got me a little bit concerned about the 126 because parts availability for these cars was really, really good uh, up until, up until um, you know, a couple of years ago. So I'm going to need to order all this stuff, make sure that I have it. Probably going to go to the dealer and get this stuff because it's just, you know, um, I don't want to put that junk on my cars. It's, uh, it's going to give problems. Um, the car was repainted. Uh, not by me, but you know, during my ownership, I didn't paint it myself. Um, by a guy, he did. Uh, I mean, he did an okay job um, for what I paid him. He did. He did an okay job, but he did a terrible job of masking. You got this primer, you know, all over the front of the car, which is so frustrating. Um, but I, again, I have a parts car, and and I, I can take all the stuff off the parts car and and put it on on or take it off and just so get in lacquer thinner and get it worked out so um, that's just stuff that I need to work through details um, but yeah I, I used to really enjoy this car and we spent a lot of money on it you know we we put um, some work in the in the interior we put some work in the air conditioning system let me let me take it down put it you know put it on the ground and then I can show you some of the inside of the car so th there's a really interesting story behind this car um, I bought this car in uh, in 2009, and I remember seeing this car, and um, I knew it was a Euro, and it was a 560. And, and for people who don't you know know about these cars or anything else like that, the European models made a lot more power than the U.S. cars. So the U.S. 560s made around 224 horsepower, 230 horsepower. Um, the Euro model 560s made anywhere from 285 to 300 horsepower, depending on uh, which version you got. So, um, so uh, this one, you know, if you check it on EPC by the VIN number, it'll tell you it's a 300 horsepower car. And, um, you know, when I saw it, I immediately knew this was a Euro car. It was in terrible shape. The, the, the paint was just burnt up. Uh, the interior just looked terrible. Dash was cracked. Um, the seats had been recovered in vinyl that was made to look like crocodile skin. So it had like this inserts that looked like crocodile skin. And they just looked horrendous. And it looked like whoever owned it at the time uh, probably wore a vest or didn't wear a shirt at all, you know, like a, and drove it because all of the vinyl was peeling off in the center, you know, just from like where it would stick to your skin if you sweated into it. Um, real nasty car, <laughs> real nasty car. But, it, you know, but it ran okay. And um, I went to see it and, uh, you know, there was this guy who was like a detailer at, at a car dealership and he owned it. And... Um, all he could talk about was this giant stereo that was in the car. That's all he could talk about. You know, there was like how it has this really nice stereo. And, you know, I looked at the car over and he, he wanted way too much money. And I kind of explained that to him and didn't go anywhere and kind of moved on. And then I saw the car again for sale maybe about six or seven months later. And, um, and uh, when I saw the car for sale, I emailed the guy thinking it was the same guy. And I said, hey, I spoke to you, you know, six months ago. And this is why... You know, I tried to explain to him why I offered him what I offered him on the car, and um, I got a response back, and uh, 
had a conversation. It turned out it was a different guy, and it was a guy that basically really owned the car, and the guy that was trying to sell it was some guy that basically uh, bought the car on you know, payment terms and really wasn't supposed to be selling it. He was trying to sell a car that didn't belong to him. So, um, you know, we struck up a conversation and I kind of let the guy know, you know what, 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 why I thought the car was only worth what it was worth. And, um, you know, he, he agreed and, and we ended up basically doing a deal and, and the car wasn't running at the time, um, you know, when he, when, by the time he got it back. And uh, he basically delivered it to me and we, we worked out a deal. I still think I paid way too much money for it, but it was, it was a euro and euros just were not available. Right, so, you know, um, I just had to have a euro. <laughs> so, so the issue with it uh, turned out to be a, a crank position sensor that needed replacing. And uh, I ended up replacing that in you know, a bunch of other ignition components and the car fired up and it ran really well and it ran really strong. Um, maybe about four or five years ago, we went through the interior. So uh, I found a... Um, a car that needed, you know, that had an interior, a good interior, and I, and I bought it, and I swapped the interior out. So this interior is of another 560, but it's a much nicer shape. Uh, this car is actually an 88, so that you can see that the door panels are from a later model car. Um, we swapped the dash out from another car as well, so the dash is completely crack-free, it was full of cracks. And um, we went through at the same time and re-sealed re, re, uh, uh, the HVAC box, uh, replaced all the vacuum pods, which you know on, on a manual climate control car really isn't much. Um, but we went through and did it anyway, and um, and uh, you know it was actually a nice car. So, uh, but it needed a front end rebuild, and and at that point I was being distracted by other other cars, so I just parked it. Um, and the only reason I pulled it out really is because. I wanted to drive a 560 again. You know, the kid had been the kid that I side worked for me had been working on a uh, a, uh, a 350 SDL, and even though that car had problems with it, um, it still felt great to drive. You know, like 560s are built like tanks, and and when you drive them, they're um, they really are a delight to drive, but they can be also exhausting as well because they're just so stout and so, un, you know, so big, and you kind of have to have muscles to drive them. Um, so I think it's one of those cars that you you want to drive for a while, and then you want to take take a break, and then you want to go back to it again. And when you go back to it, you'll get to really appreciate how nice it is. So, you know, it's it's just a very well built, very stout, very strong car that was made of really good materials, and then. Um, you know, but when you drive it, it's a little bit exhausting. So, you know, after a while of driving it and getting used to it, when you move to something like a, let's say, a W210 or a more modern car, it feels a lot lighter and a lot more responsive and a lot more uh, agile. I guess we've had raccoons in our uh, in the back of the building walking around. And I see little raccoon prints all over the place. So you can tell those aren't. Those aren't um, cat paws or anything else like that. Those are definitely raccoons. Hey guys, so um, I think I didn't record the last part, so uh, I'm re-recording this section. As you can tell, we actually did start the car, and uh, it's a bit smoky. So um, in any case, we put the new fuel pump on and the new hose, and everything went well. But unfortunately, we found out that the front fuel pump is also leaking. Not sure exactly where it's leaking from. It may be from the body, or it may be from O-rings or something like that. I think it's probably from the body. So uh, I'm going to have to order another fuel pump, um, get that get that taken care of. Uh, you can see that there's a nice big puddle of old gas. Uh, the car ran horribly when we uh, first start, tried to start it. We actually, it was flooding out. And uh, I had to unplug the fuel pump relay in order to um, uh, burn off all the excess gas because it was just flooding the system. So uh, let me just drop the car down a little bit.
so uh, I had to adjust the fuel distributor, the mixture, and uh, lean it all out. I I'm not sure if, you know, I never touched it before I, I uh, uh, started the car or anything else like that, so maybe because I took the fuel distributor off that I needed to readjust it, but it was flooding the system. We dialed it back, um, but it's smoking pretty bad, and that could be because of old gas, it could be because of just, you know, oil, valve stem seals, you know, just oil leaking down to the cylinders. But um, it runs okay now. Crank it. It runs okay. Um, I'm sure I'm going to have to fine tune it, but I do have a CO meter, so I can do that. But it revs nicely, it runs okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's running lean or rich, uh, but I'll, I'll get that figured out when I plug my CO meter in. not even smoking that badly anymore so that's really good maybe just old gas in there just in the fuel rail and the fuel lines that was uh, just had to be worked through the system but it runs okay so on the next update I'll get the other fuel pump put on and uh, hopefully a set of tires and uh, take it out give it a wash and uh, maybe take it for a spin all right guys well thank you very much and uh, tune in next week thank you